Henry's Magic Box. The winter holidays are a very special time on Sodor. There are twinkling lights and snowy nights, and there are lots of surprises of all sorts and sizes. One morning, Henry was alone at Tidna's sheds. All the other engines were busy. Henry didn't want to be alone. He wanted to be busy like the other engines. Then Sir Topham had arrived. Henry was happy to see him. Good morning, sir. Henry, I have a very special special for you. Henry gasped. This was more than he could ever have dreamed of. Yes, sir. Ready to be really useful, sir. Henry, you must pick up a very special box from Brendam Docks. Next, you must take the box to Farmer McCall's field. Then, you must go and tell all the other engines to come to Farmer McCall's field at tea time. It's important, Henry, that you take great care of the box. I want to be proud of you. Henry Weistein. He was excited to have such an important job. Of course, sir. I will take the best care of the box. Then Sir Topham had left. Henry pumped his pistons and puffed proudly to Brendam Docks. Henry chuffed into Brendam Docks. This box is special, Henry. You have to take special care of it. I know, Cranky. That's why Sir Topham Hatt chose me for the job. And Henry chuffed cheerfully away to Farmer McColl's. Henry huffed in with his very special special. Please be careful with the box. Henry was worried for his box. It stood all alone. But he had to go and tell the other engines to come to the field at tea time. I must hurry. Henry huffed along. He saw Gordon ahead at the junction. But Henry didn't puff on to tell Gordon to be at the field at tea time. Henry was worried about his box alone in the field. First, I must go and check that my special box is safe. So, Henry hurried back to the field. Henry heaved to a stop. Then, he gasped. Now, there were five Christmas trees in the field, but no box. Fizzling fire boxes! Sir Topham Hatt won't be proud of me now. He will be cross. I must Find the box. Henry steamed swiftly away. Then, Henry met Toby and James at a junction. Henry was too busy looking for the box to notice them. Hello, Henry. You look wobbly with worry. But Henry wasn't listening. He didn't tell Toby and James to be at the field at tea time. There was no box to see. Henry had to find it. Henry huffed hurriedly back to the field. Then his pistons almost popped. Bust my buffers! Now there are even more Christmas trees. But my very special box is still gone. I must find it. Henry juddered and jittered to the junction. Hello, Henry. Emily told us Sir Topham Hatt has given you a very special special. Henry gulped and gasped. He didn't tell Thomas and Percy to be at the field at tea time. There was no box for them to see. I must hurry. And Henry raced away. Henry looked everywhere for his box. In fields and fenlands, sidings and stations. He couldn't find the box anywhere. Henry steamed sadly back to the field. Then he gasped. The empty field is now a forest of Christmas trees, and my special box still isn't here. Henry, 
I asked you to do a special job. You haven't done it. It's almost tea time, and the other engines aren't here. Henry wished weakly. His firebox flickered. I'm sorry, sir. I've let you down. I haven't looked after the very special box. It has disappeared. I haven't told any of the engines to be here. And you won't be proud of me. Sir Topham Hatt sighed. Henry, you are an old and kind engine. But you worry too much. Where do you think the forest came from? Henry we steam and bubbled his boiler. He really wanted to find the answer. He didn't want Sir Topham Hatt to think he was silly. Then the answer flew into his funnel. The trees were in the box, sir. That's why the box isn't here, and the Christmas trees are. That's right, Henry. You looked after the box very well. Now, go and do the rest of your job. Henry smiled from buffer to buffer. Yes, sir. We'll all be here at tea time. And Henry pumped his pistons and chuffed cheerfully away. First, Henry found Gordon and Emily. Sir Topham Hatt wants you to go straight to Farmer McCall's field. Hurry, please. No time to waste. Next, Henry steamed to Tidmouth Sheds. Thomas, Percy, and Edward were there. Sir Topham Hatt wants you to go straight to Farmer McCall's field. Hurry, please. No time to rest. Henry puffed into Knapford Station. His cheeks were as red as James's paintwork. James was talking to the station master. Sir Topham Hatt wants you to go straight to Farmer McCall's field. Hurry, please, James. No time to talk. At last, Henry found Toby at the water tower. Sir Topham Hatt wants you to go straight to Farmer McCall's field. Hurry, please, Toby. No time to take on water. And Henry wished away. He felt a very happy engine. Henry arrived back at Farmer McCall's field, just in time for tea time. All the other engines were there, but Sir Topham Hatt wasn't. Henry felt silly. Again. I'm sorry, everyone. I thought Sir Topham Hatt was going to be here. Perhaps I was wrong. Suddenly, the Christmas trees were a forest of twinkling lights. Red, blue, green, yellow, sparkling in the darkness. The engines gasped in surprise. Fizzling fireboxes. This is wonderful. Then, there was the greatest surprise of all. Sir Topham Hatt stepped through the trees. He looked just like Santa Claus. Ho, ho, ho! Happy winter holidays to all my really useful engines! Henry's eyes popped as wide as his wheels. This had been the best winter holiday special of all. Pingy Pongy Pickup. It was an exciting day on the island of Sodor. It was the opening game for the Sodor United soccer team. All the engines huffed and puffed to be ready on time. Sir Topham Hatt arrived at Tidmouth Sheds. Today is a very busy day. One engine must take the Sodor United team to the soccer field. One engine must take the fans. One must deliver the apples for the halftime break. And the other must collect the dirty washing from Maithwaite Station and take it to the laundry lady. The engines wished happily. <coughs> now I must hurry. Thomas, you will decide which engine does which job. Emily was very excited. Soccer is my favorite game. I always puff past the soccer field when the Soto United team is playing. Did you know that the goalkeeper has a lucky pair of gloves? 
Emily was so busy boasting, she didn't hear her friends. I'll take the team to the soccer field. I'll take the fans. And I'll take the apples for halftime break. <laughs> Wait a minute. What am I going to do? You can take the dirty washing, Emily. Stinky washing? I know all about the Sodar United team. I wanted the most important job. Delivering the washing isn't the most important job. Emily huffed huffily to a junction. She was cross. I don't want a puff to Maithwaite to collect the stinky washing. Then Emily saw Percy chuff across the bridge. He was on his way to Farmer McColl's farm to collect the apples. Percy has a very important job. I'm sure I can help him. So Emily didn't chuff to Maithwaite. She took the track to Farmer McColl's farm instead. Emily huffed her hardest to Farmer McColl's. Percy was being coupled up to the car of apples. Hello, Percy. I'll help you. I'll be your back engine. No, thank you, Emily. I'm fine. But Emily wanted to help. So Emily buffered up to the other end of the freight car. She began to pull. Fizzling fireboxes! But Percy was pulling the car from the other side. Then there was trouble. Emily pulled so hard that the coupling broke. The apple car tumbled off the tracks. Apples bounced and rolled everywhere. Percy was cross. I don't need your help, Emily. This is my job. Your job is to collect the washing. Emily didn't want to collect the washing, so she steamed slowly away. I want to help my team win the day. Picking up dirty washing won't help them play. Emily clickety clacked to a junction. Then Emily saw James. James had collected the Sodor United fans. James has a very important job. I'm sure I can help him with that. So Emily pumped her pistons. She had to puff to the junction before James. James, stop! I can help you with your important job. I'll be your back engine. Then the fans will arrive more quickly. But James was going too fast to stop. Out of my way, Emily! But Emily didn't chuff out of the way. James had to screech into a siding. His wheels whirred, and he bumped into the buffers. Luckily, no one was hurt, but James was cross. Thank you, Emily. I don't need your help. This is my job. Your job is to collect the dirty washing. This made Emily cross. She really didn't want to puff the Maithwaite to collect the washing. James steamed snootily away with the passenger cars of fans. I want the most important job. I want to help my team win the day. Picking up dirty washing won't help them play. Then, Thomas puffed past with Annie and Clarabelle. Thomas was going to collect the Sodor United soccer team. Thomas has a very important job. I'm sure I can help him with that. Emily pumped her pistons and wished after Thomas. Emily chuffed into the town square. She screeched to a stop. The Sodor United soccer team was waiting. And Sir Topham Hatt was cross. Emily, where are the team's clean soccer shirts and shorts? Emily was puzzled. Then she gasped. Fizzling fireboxes. The stinky washing was the team's soccer shirts and shorts. Emily felt terrible. I didn't take the washing to the laundry lady. Now the team have nothing to wear for the opening game. 
The game can't take place. And it's all my fault. Emily felt very silly. I thought that all the other jobs were more important than mine. Now I see that all jobs are important. I'm very sorry, sir. I'm very sorry, team. Emily wished weakly. Please, sir, I'll puff my hardest and make sure the team have clean soccer shirts and shorts in time for the opening game. Emily collected the soccer shirts and shorts from Maithwaite Station. Then she huffed and puffed to Marin Station. The laundry lady quickly washed the clothes. These shirts and shorts are soaking wet. They won't be dry in time for the opening game. Emily was very worried. Then, an idea flew into Emily's funnel. Please tie the wet washing to my funnel. The washing can dry in the wind as I race to the town square. Emily chuffed and puffed proudly along the tracks. The wet soccer shirts and shorts flapped and fluttered in the wind. Now, the team will have clean washing for the game. My team will be clean and ready to play. Go Soto United, the best team today! Hooray! Everyone waved to Emily. And Emily tooted back. Emily huffed happily into the town square. She was just in time for the soccer game. Here are your clean, dry soccer shirts and shorts. The Sodor United soccer team cheered and clapped. Emily felt very important. Good luck for the game. Two, four, six, eight. We're the team who won't be late. Sodor United. <laughs> Everyone laughed and laughed. And Emily blew her whistle loudest of all. Toby and the Whistling Woods. There had been a storm on the island of Sodor. The skies were still gray, and the clouds were still heavy, as the engines huffed and puffed. Toby was puffing proudly to Knapford Station. Sir Topham Hatt had a very special special for him. Toby! The Duke and Duchess of Boxford are arriving at tea time. They need coal to warm their house. You must deliver it right away. Toby was very excited to be given such an important job. He had never delivered to the Duke and Duchess of Boxford's house before. Right away, sir! You must go through the Whistling Woods. The other track to the house is blocked. A tree fell across it in the storm. Toby was worried. He had never taken the track through the Whistling Woods. He had always puffed along the other track. I don't like the Whistling Woods. I think it's dark in there and full of strange noises. But today, Toby would have to puff through the Whistling Woods. Toby chuffed up to Whistling Woods Junction. James and Thomas were there. They were shunting freight cars. Hello, Toby. But Toby didn't say hello to his friend Thomas. He was too busy looking at the Whistling Woods. You look worried, Toby. Toby was worried, but he wanted to be brave. Hello, Thomas. I have to take this coal to the Duke and Duchess's house. Why, well, I have to chuff through the whistling woods. Then Toby's signal turned green. But he didn't chuff away. Thomas and James were puzzled. Are you scared of the whistling woods, Toby? Toby didn't want James to think he was a scaredy engine. No, I'm not. 
Thomas wanted to help his friend. I can jump through the woods with you, Toby. Toby wanted Thomas's help, but he was an old engine. Old engines can't be scaredy engines. I can't ask young engines for help. So, Toby pumped his pistons. No, thank you, Thomas. I don't need your help. And Toby chuffed off into the whistling woods all by himself. Toby's boiler jittered and juddered. The woods were very dark, and the trees looked very big. Toby wanted to be a brave engine and not a scaredy engine. I'm not scared of the whistling wood. I'll puff straight on like Thomas would. Suddenly, Toby heard a strange sound. It made his wheels wobble. What was that? Then, Toby heard the noise again. Bust my buffers! These woods are too scary for me. Toby huffed hard backwards out of the whistling woods, straight into the two freight cars James and Thomas had shunted. Thomas and James were surprised, and so was Toby. Fizzling fireboxes! I'm sorry. What happened, Toby? Were you scared? I can puff through the woods with you, Toby. Toby did want James's help, but he still thought old engines couldn't ask young ones for help. No, thank you, James. I don't need your help. So, Toby puffed back into the whistling woods, all by himself. Toby chuffed further and further. I'm not scared of the whistling wood. I'll puff straight on like Thomas would. Then he heard another strange noise. Pumping pistons. What's that? These woods are far too scary. So Toby huffed his hardest out of the whistling woods straight into the four freight cars James and Thomas had shunted. Toby was upset. Trembling trucks! I'm sorry. Once again, Thomas wanted to help his friend Toby. Toby, let us help you puff through the woods. We can puff through with you. Toby really wanted James and Thomas's help. But he still thought old engines couldn't ask young ones for help. No, thank you. So, Toby puffed back into the whistling woods all by himself. He clickety clacked along the track. I'm not scared of the whistling wood. I'll puff straight on like Thomas would. Then, Toby heard the strangest noise of all. Trembling trams! What's that noise? Toby's boiler bubbled and his wheels wobbled. He pumped his pistons and raced back out of the woods, straight into the six freight cars Thomas and James had shunted. Toby felt terrible. Oh no! This is a disaster! I've spoilt your freight cars! The Duke and Duchess won't get their coal on time. And I'm an old and scaredy engine. Toby looked at his friends. They weren't calling him a scaredy engine. Toby could see they were worried for him. I'm sorry. I thought an old engine couldn't ask for help. But now I see that you're never too old to ask for help. Please. Will you puff through the whistling woods with me? Thomas and James were happy to help. Of course, Toby. Follow us. Soon, Toby's freight car was full of coal. Then, Toby followed James and Thomas into the whistling woods. Slowly, Toby, Thomas, and James chuffed and puffed along the track. 
there's my friend, the snowy owl. The snowy owl flew above their heads. It was sweet and fluffy. Oh, my! Toby couldn't believe he had been scared of the friendly owl. Then, Toby heard another noise. What's that? It's the Woodland Waterfall, look! The waterfall was wonderful. It tinkled and sparkled. It clattered and splattered on the stones. Buffers and bumpers, that's beautiful. Then, the engines heard a noise that was very, very strange. What's that? It's the wind whistling through the woods. It's the whistling woods. Toby smiled. He wasn't a scaredy engine anymore. He was very happy he had asked his friends for help. I may be old, but now I'm happy. And Toby smiled all the way to the Duke and Duchess's house. <laughs>